Howdy, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be polishing some obsidian. It's not going to be fire obsidian this time. It's going to be something called velvet obsidian. So this, I didn't get this myself. This was a gift from the Gemstones channel. Uh, they are on YouTube. I sent over some fire obsidian for them to do an unboxing and they sent over a gift. So let's check it out. So they sent over these two pieces of velvet obsidian from Mexico. They did an unboxing of this of these exact two uh, stones, plus they did another bigger piece. But uh, they did an unboxing of these, and uh, the way they were able to get the colors to show is that they got it wet. So we got these pieces wet here. And uh, see here. It's hard to see, but there is a little bit of color play. A little bit of green. Here's the blue. And you got some color on this one as well. Some blue colors. I think so. I saw some greens in there too. But we're going to go ahead and expose these colors and get these polished up. We're going to go ahead and start with the genie this time, just for the two diamond wheels we have. Um, this one's 80 grit, and this one is 220. And then after we get done with these two wheels to shape the stone, we're going to go ahead and take over to the blue capping machine on the uh, softer Nova wheels to go through the polishing process. <laughs> All right, we have the rough shape now. So now we're gonna be going through the various stages of grit on here. I don't know if I really need this end step right here because this one is grit um, 140 of the Nova wheel. And I think I can skip this one and go straight to the two, what grit is that again? 280. And then from there we go from, uh, so 280, 600, 1200, 3000, and then take it to um, polish. Um, I think these stones are going to turn out really nice. And again, these are just the rough shapes. I don't typically keep a very pointed edge on the finished obsidian pieces just because if this, were to sh um, if this edge hits anything, it's going to be more apt to break on a sharp edge than it does on a rounded edge. So this um, sharp edge will probably go away here on this stage.
Okay, so we're done with the 1200 grit Nova wheel. Uh, I think I'm ready to go to polish. I've checked and I rechecked uh, for any scratches that might stand out after it gets uh, done with the polishing process. I didn't really bother to take it to the 3000 grit wheel or above. I think I'm just going to take it to the, the, the carpet pad and call it good. Um, typically because obsidian polishes pretty quick. Um, one thing that I do like about certain rainbow obsidians that have that look a lot like this, hide scratches it a little bit better than your clear black or your plain black, because black will just like be like, here I am. Um, so the rainbows hide it a little bit better. Uh, it, it, for me, it's a little bit, uh, it does hide it better, but the, since I'm a bit OCD with how these things turn out, it makes it a little bit harder having to find the scratches to get them out. And uh, what I do is um, I have, I'll show you here. I actually have uh, two different lights. I have this LED light here, which um, typically if I'm recording, I won't often use this when I'm recording anymore because uh, what will happen is uh, it'll have like a black bar that goes up and down the camera. I don't want that. Um, but what I do use it for is checking for scratches. And so I use this light and this other LED, like regular bulb. And also this light over here. Um, it seems like they have different temperatures. Um, so I can actually see something in one light and not the other light. So, uh, I use a combination of the two lights to kind of uh, make sure that there's no scratches before going on the polish. Uh, but now I got that out of the way, let's take it over to the carpet wheel and get this uh, all shined up. For those new here, this is a carpet polishing pad. This is a Berber carpet that's been glued to a wheel that goes to a pulley, that goes to a motor, and it spins. And yeah, that's what it does. Uh, and for a polishing compound, I use uh, cerium oxide. And I like to get a nice soupy consistency. Um, this is a little bit too soupy. I like to have it a little less soupy. I also need some more polishing compound in there here at some point. Um, but what I'll do is I will uh, turn this on, wet the wheel, apply the cerium oxide, and then do a couple more spritzes of the water again, and then I'll get to work. I like to add a fair amount of water where the wheel is fairly damp, not, but not overly saturated. What I'll be doing, I'll actually be working in this section of the wheel. I don't necessarily need to work out in this section. Um, if I have bigger pieces that have more of a slight in, or like an indent in it, then I might have to use the edge, but for this, I don't. This part sh shouldn't take too long at all, and I'll show you why. Let's find a good spot here. Let's pick this spot right there. see it starting to polish up. Now it is important to make sure that the wheel stays damp because it does not work very well if it dries out while you're trying to get a polish. And one thing I do like about the carpet wheel is that it doesn't necessarily grab the stone and throw it and when I say that I used to polish when I first started polishing I started polishing on a leather wheel and what would happen is the leather would dry out it would grab the stone and fling it and so you would be very diligent of having that spray bottle nearby to keep the leather um, damp because it didn't matter how strong you were <laughs> If that leather decided to dry out and grab that stone, it was gone. Okay, I'm do a quick check here, just kind of see if I missed any spots. We're going to go for a wet look here. 
best we can. If you're wondering what... <laughs> that's why I have, a, I have a towel draped down. That way if I do happen to catch an edge on accident, the towel will, should catch it when it falls down. But uh, if you're wondering what styrium oxide I use, I use Gordon's Glass um, Styrium Oxide. There, uh, there will be a link in the description of this video. So if you want to get some for yourself, there's an Amazon link. I am an affiliate, so whatever you buy on there, I get a small percentage. And it helps out the channel. So if you happen to get some, I do appreciate um, your support. <laughs> really good stuff. I've been using the same cerium oxide for many years now. And I don't have any complaints. Okay, so we have everything all washed off. Before I show the piece, um, just take note. See all the different layers in this piece of obsidian? The color goes all the way through. In order to see what that color looks like, you need to go at an angle across all those different layers to get a nice result of a finished piece. Now, if you were just to polish the side face of this, you're not going to get anything. There's no color there. The color is either on the top or the bottom along with the parallel line. And... Uh, This is the result. That turned out really, really nice. Now before, you really had to get the piece wet in order to see all the colors. You don't anymore. It's already got a nice little wet shine going. That is the finished polish. If I had to grade it, I'd give it about an A. But just look at the colors. So beautiful. Flip it over. Same thing. It's beautiful colors. I would not have guessed that there was this much color. I thought maybe... It's hard to tell right now because like a lot of this is the cerium oxide that's covering the piece. Um... I thought that maybe like some of the silver banding would have not have any had any color in it, um, but sure enough, I had ground down into it, and there's plenty of color. So beautiful piece. I love the blues. So the circle right here, that circle is some kind of ash pocket. Uh, nothing can really do about it. There was a smaller one right here, but that chipped out during the sanding process. And we do have some natural imperfections here in the stone. Nothing that can do about. Same thing we were on this side, some natural imperfections, but still, beautiful piece. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Look at that. All the different colors, beautiful. All right, let's look at the other one. So this little one is actually my favorite one of the two. Uh, just look at it. Here, let's zoom in a little bit. Look at those colors. That's such a beautiful stone. And look at the shine too. It's a nice finish. It's beautiful colors. Again, this one, you needed like a lot of water to really see the color. And you don't anymore. And I was originally going to do just this side. And then I kind of decided to say, you know what, why not? Let's go ahead and do the back side too. Completely different colors. Let me just light a little bit. You know, the shine is getting in the way. <laughs> but it's a beautiful color. So, again, I want to show you why I don't polish the sides of the obsidian. Because if you polish the side, 
you're not going to see anything. You're just going to see maybe some striations if there are any. That's it. I accidentally started to polish the site on accident. But you can see the striations, but that's it. So I want to hear from you what you think your favorite piece is. And uh, I'd really like to hear that in the comments. Such beautiful stones. If you would like to know a little bit more about these two pieces of Velvet Rainbow Obsidian, I will have a link to the Gemstones channel where they did an unboxing of these exact two pieces before they, had, uh, you know, eight months later sent it back down to me. <laughs> so go check out that channel and check out that video. It's pretty cool. They do a lot of other unboxings as well. Um, and, but I do I really appreciate the gift, you guys. It was really cool to get these in the mail. And uh, yeah, so thank you for that. For everyone else, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit on how to polish obsidian. And I will see you guys in the next video. Rock on.